going back to the system that I was talking about called the Recompose system. And this became more important than I thought it was going to be. I mean, I knew we were going to have to do this for the Red Queen. I, when the head got larger, I had to somehow compensate for the frame. So you can see this is my original frame here, my 4K frame. I'm going to go right to where I scale the Red Queen's head up. So you can see what happens when I scale the head up. Switch off here. So we did a little head scale on the waist cinch, but now we've lost the framing that the DP intended for this shot. So now we have to come up with a way to recreate that. And what we had was a tool called Recompose, and essentially it's a scale tool. It allowed you to reframe based on, in this case, I'm gonna justify based on the bottom, so I can reframe and maintain my bottom framing. And I can you know, make her match now, kind of where the framing of the original photography was supposed to be. You can see in doing this, look at the queen's body, how small it's getting. Look at the chair that she's sitting on, the change there. We're effectively changing the field of view of the lens. We're changing the lens. So if we were, if we were to do this traditionally, if we were to wait till we made these framing decisions and then match move the shot, again, we would never finish the movie. And also, because to dimensionalize this movie, we go through a whole process called rotomation, where an animator goes through with a model of the character and frame by frame aligns a CG character to the, uh, the photographic character. And that photography gets reprojected onto that geometry to create the depth. If we waited for the final framing decisions to do that work, again, we would never finish the film. So this recompose system basically allowed us to make all those decisions um, later on, do the, do the rotoscoping, do the ro uh, rotomation, and do all the paint work associated with the shots and match moves early, right with the original plates. And then we could hit this button here, generate offsets, and it would kick out the correct information of the scaling that we did here. All that information would automatically go into Maya and apply it to the film back of Maya, and it would adjust the match move for us automatically. So we had a pretty complex uh, process in place, and it really made the difference for us to be able to, to give Tim Burton as much flexibility so he could make decisions downstream uh, and he didn't have to make everything up front. In talking about Alice scaling, you know, I showed you a really basic example of, of Alice being scaled. This one is one of the more complex ones, but there are, there are many. And everyone, every one of them required a little something different. Like I said, we always put platforms on set to try to get Alice to the correct height so she matched visually with uh, whoever she was in scene with. In this case, we would go through and let me show you the original play. You can see. So this is Alice. You can see she's on a platform here. We didn't know exactly what part of this scene we were going to we, Ken Ross and I would go into the set in the morning, make up the shots as, as we went along throughout the day. And in this case, we didn't know how long we were going to play in this scene. So again, it had to be able to work at any point throughout the whole play photography. So you can see Alice is at the correct height for her eye line. And the platform, again, is mathematically calculated so she's at the right height. But you can see when she rounds this corner here, if you were to scale her up, her stride gets bigger as well. She no longer has a five foot four stride. She has an eight foot six stride or a nine foot tall stride. So that's how we, you see these steps that she's walking on here. We mathematically back time those steps because the steps that she really wants to be on, if you look at the steps down here, the continuation of those steps is underneath this platform here. So those are the steps she really wanted to be walking on when she was scaled up. So we had, on the set, we had to do a lot of math. And likewise, we had to do a lot of math in Nuke, and it, it was uh, very flexible and let us do that. So let me show you on this scaling. If I were to do that technique of scaling Alice by the head, scaling her down, and if, say I were to track her head throughout the course of the shot and scale her down and make her the nine feet tall we wanted to make her for this particular scene, if I did that, here's what we would end up with. We would end up with her sliding all over the ground. Uh, because we had a camera move here, so not only do we have a camera move, we have to adjust for her stride. So it's a complex scaling. We can't just scale from the top down like we wanted to uh, in those earlier scenes. Um, like I said, we match moved every shot in this movie, and we had a, a, a camera for it. We had survey data. We had all the stuff on set that we needed. I'll have to show you here. We have our survey. We have our camera move, and we have you can see all the camera moves through the scene. So what I decided to do is to create some platforms in 3D, some basic shapes. You can see I created three platforms. And I kind of extended them out pretty far. If you compare that with the survey information, you can see that these platforms go way out there. But what these platforms did, were they represented the various heights that Alice was standing on in the platforms in the scene. Again, if I can uh, put my image up here, Let's go back to the beginning. Behind a couple of these platforms. Now we're looking through the camera on these platforms, and you can see this, this one top one represents the platform that she eventually will be on. This uh, 
middle one represents the platform that she's currently on. And then, of course, we have represent the platform that we want her to be on, which is actually on the ground. So if I take all those platforms and I turn them all on, you can see that they vanish in a 2D perspective into a certain point in space. And that will move based on how the camera's moving in the scene. So basically, mathematically, if I were to put a point there and scale from that point, I could make her any height I wanted to. And it would back her up from that point, and she would track along the scene. So what I went ahead and did is let me turn off the image here. I did a one-point track on that vanishing point. And this van of course, it only vanishes in two, 2D space. Those platforms are parallel in 3D, so they never really cross each other. Um, and I would use this scaling point, this uh, tracking data, I would pipe it in and use it for my scaling of the scene. And I would actually scale by that point. So you can see I have Alice kind of scaled up already here. And basically, I built in the correct math behind. So you can see I have a nine foot tall Alice here. If I were to slide through, this is her at 6'2". This is her at four feet. But the nice thing is you can see as she's scaling through, she's on the platform in line with the platform the whole time. And if I could go to any point in that shot and view this, and she would always be on that platform. So what that allowed me to do was to correct for the size and correct for the, the scaling that was going to happen. And so she wouldn't slide. But there's still a pretty key problem here. She's still on a platform. She's not on the ground, which is what we need her to be. Uh, so if I were to go to the end frame here, you can see her eye line would be way higher than it was supposed to be. So what I ended up doing there, <clears throat> one of the things you could do, you could try to scale. You could use that same scaling point as a rotation point, and I can rotate her in 2D, down, or up, let's see, try to rotate her down. But what would happen, you can see that she'd end up being kind of rotated around, not visually looking correct, even though technically she wouldn't slide across the floor doing this. What I ended up doing is going back to my, my uh, platforms. Those platforms, I would go out in space. Now I took Alice and applied her onto a, a card, a piece of geometry. And you can see I would put a rotation point where those planes would go out into space. And what that allowed me to do is to rotate Alice in 3D space from that same point, but this time it's, it's a 3D point in space. So if I can go to the end result here, you can see what I can do by going to my rotation here is I can now rotate her about that point and change her in the scene and I can get her feet to touch the ground now without actually again breaking the match move, breaking the relationship of her sliding through the scene. If I go to my end frame here and of course I can animate this if I want. I can uh, now bring Alice so she's effectively close to the eye line that she was at or she should be at in the scene. I could kind of tweak that in. So in this way, I was able to scale Alice, get her to line up exactly where I wanted her to line up, and also maintain my tracking. And you can see here's the end result of that same test I did earlier, where now she's walking across this grid and she's not sliding all over the place. So this was an important aspect of the work that we did in Nuke as well. We came up with many techniques to do this. And, and, and once we started doing it multiple times on different shots, we're like, well, you know what? Let's make a tool to do that. So we created tools to do that work as well. Anyway, I'm out of time, but I want to thank you guys for listening, and I hope you guys uh, did see Alice. Hope you enjoyed the film. All right, thanks, guys.